Hello and Happy New Year. This uh, video or audio is going to serve as a little bit of a teaser for a memoir sort of thing that I've worked on for the past couple of months um, where I've summarised pretty much the entire year of 2022 through the lens of racing and training for mountain running. Um, Peaks and Valleys of a Mountain Running Year is what uh, it is called. It'll be available on Medium. Um, I'm unsure whether I'm going to publish the whole thing as one long piece or whether I'll chop it up um, into separate chapters. This is chapter one. This is all about the Art O'Neill Ultra. This is a race that is going to take place pretty shortly here. Um, so I want to get this out before the running of the race this year. Um, to sort of summarise my experience with the Art O'Neill last year, the ups, the downs, the sacrifices. I was filming a lot beforehand, sort of documenting my thoughts, so I thought it was about time to share those. So here we go. This is the final. This is race week, I suppose you could say. Mad. Mad to think that. It feels like this, this sort of build into this race has felt a little bit more involved than builds into other races. Um, this sort of build has been strenuous, um, not only physically, um, definitely emotionally and sort of um, mentally as well. The three weeks that followed were emotionally challenging and very difficult, with concerns about the safety of schools as we heard the news of yet another spike in cases. I opted to isolate myself from Rosie, a teacher, for the weeks leading into the Art O'Neill Challenge. I wanted to win the race. On one of my training runs, I was pondering the sacrifices I had taken in the lead up. I had no alcohol over Christmas. I went on a 20 kilometer run with two 20 minute efforts on Christmas day instead of the family walk. I wasn't seeing my girlfriend and I was obsessing. You better fucking win, I said out loud to myself. The Art O'Neill Challenge has been an alluring race for me ever since I got into running. Since Great Outdoors sponsored the event, I had been exposed to the chat and buzz of the event for a few years. I actually even got a place in 2019 to hike it but never attended. 2022 was my first rodeo with the event and I knew from the moment that I finished that I would return. Yeah, so. Recce day. Just have my coffee, gonna have some food, and then I'm gonna drive over. Stoked. So this is it. We are heading off for probably our final recce of the course. Um, I'm just driving through Blessington currently. Great minds think alike. Holy schnit, there's a couple of people doing a recce today. That's hilarious. More or less. That's where we got caught here now. And it's our first time up Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, when I did, I did a wreck. And then once you hit that, you're just far, follow the forest. Okay, down. so I which way did you come from here then? Yeah, so I'm going to sort of stay. We, this morning, we picked the wrong path down and then we met, then we, uh, we followed another path. They're far more detailed. The know. West Wicklow, East, yeah. East West Mountains. What scale is it? What scale is 25,000. Uh, yeah. yeah. And did you swing, did you come in this far? Or um, did you, did you start yeah, coming pretty off? much. Pretty much over Billy Burns Gap, but the left hand side of Billy Burns. And so this is me heading up one of three potential routes. Um, it's kind of as much just being out here and as I said to the hikers, oh my God, that scared the hell out of me. Beautiful deer over there. That's hilarious. Ah! Um, yeah, it's kind of just being out here and rubbing your nose up against it. Um, but like, so pretty here. Wow, it is absolutely beautiful up here. The moon is out in force. William Burns's gap is over there. The sun is setting. Absolutely grateful right now. Holy moly. How are you? It's myself. <laughs> How are you getting on? You've been down to have you? Oh no, God no, not today. Gotta save, gotta save the legs for the big day. <laughs> Enjoy guys. My God. That was great. For multiple reasons, like not only, like I could take or leave the knowledge that I've gleaned as a, after, as a result of doing that recce, 
but just just like being out in the hill being out in the hills I'm gonna be in in daytime I've never actually been in, in these hills on a clear day during the day on a clear day um, absolutely beautiful love it serious hype around it with all the people that were here wrecking today um, stoked that was a good two and a half hours of plodding around hills not fast average pace was 9 30 and um, just sort of moving in the hills that's exactly what the doctor ordered really happy really stoked really grateful for a number of things um but yeah time to get home so it is wednesday morning i'm just about to take the dog for a walk um i'm on double dog walk duty today it's weird because the day because uh the other day was really good with the recce um, and that sort of really made me feel far better about things um, just having rubbed my nose up against it but then I find myself doing all sorts of silly things like um, I was lying in bed last night and I was uh, thinking about other people that are uh, running the race and then like it was almost like a reaction I reached for my phone open Strava to see what their PRs over the marathon distance was and then I was like I stopped myself I was like why the feck do you care Matthew like why does it actually matter because in this race you're not even going to be you're not even going to be racing those people like you're not even going to be lining up at a start line the way that you pace it it doesn't really matter even if somebody has the feckin course record on the feckin road section it does not have any bearing on on how they're gonna go on the hills and vice versa like it's more of a personal challenge because of the staggered start than it would be in previous years or, or in any other situation so the staggered start for me for this challenge I think is more of a blessing in disguise than I was thinking uh, because it means that it's less of a race it means there's less to sort of overthink about um because i'm not going to be lining up with these boys like it's it's uh and hopefully like if anybody's going to be starting behind me and closing a gap on me i'll have held it out for the road section and then i won't even know if they pass me so it's actually quite it's actually quite good and there will be that car constant carrot in front of my nose to like chase after which is quite good um but yeah it's it's uh pretty much two days to go now um depends if you can't race day or not but rest day today shake out tomorrow and then race on friday exciting stuff in 2022 the race start was staggered due to continuing covid concerns i set off at 10 15 pm with my friend patrick ward we ran together for the first few kilometers before he told me to go on he knew I had a focus. Parting ways as we entered Harold's Cross, I knew the next time I would see Patrick was 55 kilometers later in the car park of Glenmalur Lodge after traversing some of Wicklow's wildest hills in a cold January night. See you in Glenmalur. Okay, see you in Glenmalur. Good, good luck. The race was going well luck, until Valley Nulty Bridge where I began to feel my stomach turn. It was about 21k in that I first felt my stomach go, I said to myself, as if I was giving a post-race interview. I knew this wasn't a small upset stomach that would pass in a few minutes, which is common in running. This felt more like a stitch mixed with a cramp, mixed with a need to go to the toilet. I pushed on, continuing to overtake people as I went, all the while hoping, praying the pain would subside. I turned into checkpoint one. I yelled my number so the volunteers could retrieve my bag from the pile of over 120 that were strewn across the gravel. As close to an F1 pit stop as I could muster, I was off. Running along the fire road towards Billy Burns Gap, I thought, this goes on for ages. I didn't remember this section feeling so long last time. With ease, I traversed the first mountain section, in spite of the incredible lack of visibility. Less than five meters, I would say. On the fire road section, just before the Wicklow Gap Road, I took my first break to try and see if my theory of needing the toilet would help my stomach. It didn't. Passing through checkpoint two, 
I was just about to aim, able to maintain a run. This is a pan flat section I knew I'd be capable of running hard, but it was all I could do to keep a jog. I cannot recall what I said, but when a member of the Dublin Wicklow Mountain Rescue Team said something to me, I just about mustered a moan in response. I had wrecked this section a good bit and was confident I knew the fastest line, but I hiked the vast majority of the climb to Arts Cross. The five kilometres that followed through the peat hags around Three Lakes was some of the most uncomfortable movement I have ever experienced in the hills. I knew the pace I was travelling at would probably result in me not achieving my goal of winning, winning the race. At times I was doubting if I could even make the finish. Rosie, my family, and Laura, Paddy's girlfriend, would be at the finish, waiting for me. They could probably see my tracker. I took another break, and this time I thought I noticed some discoloration in my urine, similar to how it would look after consuming a beetroot salad. It's extremely hard to tell in the dark. The Glenmalure Road has never felt so long. Nearing the finish, I heard my mum's voice in the distance. Go on, Matthew, good man, you're great, she said. I held back tears. Do the finish, eh, Rob? <laughs> mm -hmm. Follow the light. <laughs> Stop that van. Go. Go, Matthew. The Art O'Neill Challenge taught me a lesson. It taught me many lessons, in fact. It taught me humility. It taught me that running, especially over long distances, is far more about patience than it is about performance. It taught me that contrary to my previous beliefs, sport is not a selfish pursuit, it is a collective one. The weeks that followed were a much needed disconnection from running. A good 10 days of no training, only dog walks and hikes should clear the fatigue, I thought. Little did I know that I would be feeling the Art O'Neill in various ways for many weeks to come. So I hope you enjoyed that reading of the first section of this piece of writing, this memoir, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think I'm going to call it a memoir, but that sounds really um, obnoxious. <laughs> anyway, if you want to read the entire piece, as I said, it'll be linked below. Um, and yeah, I will be sharing more readings from it hopefully with video clips and images over the next short while.